My name is Hugh Ross and the character was Major Munger Munro. Um, I had a call and I went to meet the casting director, um, the Hubbards, John and Ross Hubbard, who are um, great people. And I'd done, they'd, they'd given me work before and got me work before. And met the director, Tom Clegg. Then uh, I read a bit, I think. And then I went away. It was quite late in the day. Um, uh, uh, and then I went home and waited and the call came saying I'd got the job. Okay, he's um, a Scotsman, uh, very keen on a bit of tartan, and uh, he's got a good sense of humour, and uh, he had a very good relationship with Wellington, at least I'm not sure Wellington would agree, but um, uh, he, he liked to put Wellington in his place and keep him, and he wasn't in awe of where Wellington at all. And um, uh, he played the bagpipes, which was quite a discovery. Um, anyway, uh, just a nice, full-blooded, well-rounded, sort of enigmatic character. You don't really know much about him or his life, but um, uh, he's out there doing it. Uh, well, I'd brought it with Hugh before. We'd already done um, a television series in Scotland called The Advocates together, so we already knew each other. Which was good because it's always, especially if you're in a strange place like the Ukraine. And we flew to this place called Simferopol, which was known affectionately as Simply Awful. And um, uh, Hugh and I got on very well together. And um, we're still very good friends, in fact. And he was, he was kind of, um, I got ill. It was very, very, very hot. 110 degrees or something like that. Those uniforms were very, very hot, and uh, I got shingles, which was a bit of a drama. And I was really, really ill, and the Ukrainian doctors weren't quite sure what it was, and they, they actually treated it wrongly. If, it, if I'd been in the UK, they'd have immediately given me a cyclovir, which is what they do for shingles. They kept rubbing things. The, the doctor came with a chef's hat on, I remember, which was a bit alarming. Anyhow, I was very poorly, and... Um, Hugh was kind of my, and I, I mean I had to get the, get better in time to do the work. But Hugh kind of was my guardian angel, and looked after me and made sure it was okay, and yeah, kept me going. Yeah, so he's been a very good friend. Well, we flew to this place in Ferropol, and we were in um, an ex KGB sanatorium. Uh, which was, it was okay, but it was quite primitive. And it was, uh, there was the mafia were around the place. It was all a bit dodgy, I think. Um, they all ate in a big dining hall. It was, it was, you know, like being in the army. The producer thought it was very good for us, made men of us all. And, um, uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was primitive, it was, but it was unforgettable. And in Sharp's Gold, which was the first of the three films I did, um, I got very friendly with Rosalind Linehan, who was playing uh, in, in, in the Irish woman, who was very, very surprised by it. However, we all, we all got on very well together. Vodka helped. And, uh, yeah, no, it was fine. It was good. Well, the other thing was we ran out of... Um, drinking water at one point and the producer had to get some uh, bottles of water flown in from Germany. It was all, it's all in Jason Salky's book I think, you must know about Jason Salky's book about it, he describes it, all the ups and downs and comings and doings. It was an unforgettable experience. Yes, yes I did. Um, uh, uh, quite, quite a bit um, stuff to do, various scenes to play with him and got on very well with him. I didn't, I didn't have a lot in common with him. I didn't know enough about Sheffield United and I think Sheffield United is a big cute team. Um, but he was very nice, very easy to get on with and, uh, and, and uh, easy to work with, good to work with.
Well, I suppose Hugh, because I kind of admired him very much for what he was doing and what he was playing, and because I had so much to do with him. The character I played, interestingly, the the um, Napoleon's um, uh, the, 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 the kind of character I played, the functionary that, that was played by three or four different actors in each of the series, and I think it was a great part actually on, in all its different, all the different people that played it played it differently, but it was a really nice part that kind of um, the spy catcher of uh, of Wellington. Uh, so I think I was very lucky to play the part really, because it, it, there was a lot of a lot of range in it, a lot of, from being quite strict and quite military to being witty and funny and so, a good part. I liked Sharp's Gold, I thought it was a really good story, I mean it was, it was my best story. Um, and uh, the whole thing of El Casco and all that kind of stuff. And he, he was he was an interesting nice actor too. And we got on very well as, with with him. It was the inter international element of it all was quite was good. Meeting people from all over the place really, um, and uh, it's it just an extraordinary group. And I'm thinking about it. I haven't done for a while, but it was just a, I can just see us all out there. It was an extraordinary group of people. But we were on the whole, as I say, really lucky to get on very well together and. Chris Burt, who produced, was a, a great chap. He's dead now, unfortunately, but um, he was very good and had a good sense of humour, which was very important under the circumstances. Um, yeah, as I say, an unforgettable experience. You have a, a, I did a film in the Falkland Islands. That was an, also an unforgettable experience. Very lucky, lucky as actors that you sometimes get these jobs in extraordinary situations. Makeup wise, I think was quite straightforward to me. Remember, I had a big problem. I had a big, big hat in Sharp School, which was a problem with lighting and things because it kept covering my face and blah blah blah. Um, we sorted it out and had a smaller hat, I think, in the other two stories. Um, and costume, yeah, costume was. I mean, of course, I grew up wearing a kilt, so that wasn't too much of a problem. I didn't wear a kilt all the time, but I did enjoy wearing the kilt. It's a very, very good thing to wear. Um, yeah, I, I, the, 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 the research and the um, skill of the costume department on Sharp and, and the, is just extraordinary. I mean, the detail and everything. They were a great team. Um, yeah, that's my main memory of the costume. Swirling around, yeah. No, but as far I mean, I we had to ride horses, and I'd had a bit, I'd been I'd done some horse riding as a young man, but not for a long time. And before I went out to the Ukraine, I had two or three lessons here, down in Surrey, and then the Ukrainian horses were quite wild and quite, quite um, alarming in a way. However, the trainers were good, and we had to do with it. the most. Um, challenging thing I had to do was I had to ride a horse from one end of a column of soldiers to the other and at the top end of the column was Wellington and I had to hand over some papers to him and the timing of that with it not being a tremendously skilled rider was a bit uh, nerve-wracking. However, I did it and I was very proud of myself for having done it and I look at it now and think, oh my god, I can remember it well but it was, I can remember my heart being in my mouth but it looks okay. That's what the great thing about acting. Sometimes you, you, you know, all sorts of things going on inside, and somehow you have to hide them and get on with the job. Well, I really enjoyed the scene in Sharp Sharp, Sharp Saw where I played the bagpipes, and uh, it, it was a big long scene, and it was a big long learn because it was, had lots to say in it. But it was. Uh, it was a great scene to play and, and really good fun. And it's, I mean, it's one that people seem to remember very well. No one, because the bagpipes are sort of unforgettable, really. And that's with James Purefoy, who, who I'd also worked with before in the theatre. And um, 
that scene and also the scene with El Casco, the night scene, again, where it had a lot of description, and I was just, I, I was still feeling pretty rotten at the time when I had to do that, and I remember thinking, I'm never going to be able to do this. And uh, but it was, it, we got it done, it was a good scene, and uh, so those are my two most memorable scenes, I think. No, I can't remember anything particularly drastically going wrong on the set. It was amazing. I mean, we got a lot shot in a day. It was, it was um, a, a tight schedule, so there wasn't a lot of time for mucking about or anything. It was just get on with the job. Um, no, no, not, not, no. I can't particularly remember anything. Don't think. Sorry. <laughs> No, not really. I can remember more memories about being on the on the location. I mean, the the two things I mentioned to you—the thing about the bag, bagpipes and the and that night scene with El Casco. Um, I can remember. I remember when we actually moved from the from the uh, from Simferopol to Yalta on the and that and that was great. We had to, that one, a wonderful change of scenery there on the coast and everything. So a lot of my memories are to do with locations and about where we were staying and what we were, you know, and and the food not being too great, really. Uh, it was fine, but not great. Um, uh, yeah, d d I can just, yes, I said my, my memory goes back to, to all the different sort of um, groups of people, different hotel rooms. I remember uh, and I'm still very friendly with Ali Byrne, who's now called Ali Asiri, who played Lady, um, what was she called? Lady something in Sharp's Battle. And um, since I can remember, I used, to, I used to have this, I used to have milk monitor and leave milk outside a door in the morning. Those little things you remember about being on vacation somewhere, you know? And Ali and I laugh about it now. Lady Kylie, I think she was called. Um, yeah, you make good friends on these jobs. I mean, that's one of the perks about being an actor is that you make good friendships and you you, you pick up them and drop them, you know, you move on and then you pick them up again. And it's, it's great, that's there's, there's continuity in our business usually, which is nice. Yes, um, uh, we had a po podcast there was another podcast, uh, I can't remember the group's called, the Facebook group, and I uh, saw so, um, Ian McNeese and I also got on very well together. Ian and, and I, I uh, um, can't remember what his character was called, but he farted a lot. The character farted a lot. Um, uh, and he and I had already done this, the job I mentioned in the Falklands together, so we had, we had kind of um, a background of, of location stuff. So. And I'm actually seeing him again in a couple of weeks. We're doing a convention together. Um, so he's great fun. Um, Jason keeps in touch with me. I'm, seeing, I'm just supposed to have a um, get together with Jason, then lockdown happened and stuff. Jason and his wife. Um, who else? Yeah, we, yeah, Oliver Cotton. I've seen him from time to time. Um, yeah, as I say, there's continuity in our business. And, they say this equity has got something like 70,000 members in it, but actually the, the, the group that works is about 3,000 of them. I don't quite know why that pans out on that, but that's what they say. So, of course, you can cross paths with people. Do. Yeah, not, not huge amounts of them, because I mean, the, the company's all got wise to it and they buy you out. But yes, occasionally, yes, there is occasionally some, it's still on shot, um, gold, I think, isn't it? But we're talking, um, I think, more like pennies rather than pounds here, but not, not a lot of repeat fees. In the olden days, on, on a contract, they had you know, great repeats, but not now. It's the, your bought out, take it or leave it. No, I don't think so. I'm mean, just, just, no, it basically just boils down to the fact of it's been like a one in a million job and how lucky I was to have got it, really. And uh, nobody who was in Sharp will ever forget it. And uh, it was, 
And it's great. I mean, what's really nice about it is I went to see a, a concert recently and I was kind of walking up the aisle at the interval and it was actually quite anonymous. This was two weeks, three weeks ago. And this man says, Hey, Sean, oh, Wellington Spymaster. And I said, Yes, yes. And he said, So then he followed me out into the bar and he said, Oh, I just, I just loved Sharp ever since I was a boy. And you think, you do these things and you don't realize in a way that these are going to be important things in people's life and that they will go on enjoying it. And that's really gratifying. It's really lovely to know that. So, of course, my head was, was nicely pumped up after that meeting. Yeah. So that's that. And the, the fans are amazing. They've still got a tremendous following. Um, Another thing was I was in, I was in a taxi in Edinburgh, and, the ta and for a long time, people used to take me for Richard Wilson. You know, I don't believe it, because we're the same kind of accent, I suppose, and uh, both bald. He's ten years older, and I'm always saying that ten years older and a foot shorter. But um, and quite often people have said said to me, oh, I don't believe it. I said, No, sorry, wrong person. And then I got in this taxi, and the taxi driver said, I know who you are. And I said, no, I'm not Richard Wilson. He said, no, he said, you're Major Mungo Monroe. And of course, that was very nice to know. <laughs> Here is my souvenir of Sharp, which the uh, uh, set the, the designer very kindly gave to me, which is Monroe's King of Kings Whiskey. And I've had the cask now for whatever it is, 30 years. And I treasure it. It's a lovely, lovely memento of an extraordinary job. Pleasure. Nice to meet you.